guys and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to see more. Coming up in today's episode, the North Queensland Cowboys take on the New Zealand Warriors at Morton Stadium in the first NRL game. We follow up that report with reports on the Brisbane Broncos versus the Sydney Roosters. And the Manly Seagulls and the Humphreys family connection. Will it be coming to an end? So it's been an interesting week this week for Manly Seagulls. As we begin by looking at the story that happened early in the week. Despite all the euphoria with uh, Dale Cherry Evans signing a new deal. And their win again against the Newcastle Knights. It's come out that the Manly Seagulls have accepted the resignation of CEO Stephen Humphreys after several sponsors informed the club he had approached them regarding his personal financial situation. The Sydney Morning Herald reported Humphreys was set to front the board over allegations, alleged corporate governance issues, uh, but instead resigned from his position on Friday. Sources told the Sun Herald uh, Humphreys had approached several sponsors that he had been dealing with professionally in relation to club matters about his own financial situation. Humphreys though did not respond to attempts from the Herald uh, when they asked for a comment on the matter. In a statement on the club website, the board of the Manly Warringah Seagulls have accepted the resignation of Chief Executive Officer Stephen Humphreys effectively immediately. Uh, this was done on Friday night. The resignation comes after discussions with the board and Seagulls director and part owner Gary Woolman has been appointed interim CEO while recruitment for permanent CEOs is underway. The club have, though, gone through more than a dozen CEOs since the demise of the Northern Eagles 22 years ago. Names like Lyle Gorman, Tim Cleary, Joe Kelly, David Perry, Grant Mayer, Graham Lowe, Pat Wilson, Paul Cummings, who was a CEO twice, and Ian Thompson are just some of the names who have come and gone in the CEO position. Obviously, this is a disappointing development. We weren't expecting Manly Chairman Scott Pentel, the Sun Herald. I have set to say the club has never been in better shape on and off the field. Our financials are strong. The new centre of excellence has just opened. We've got a fantastic new Northern Grandstand at, with promising signs of a bigger redevelopment on the guards. The club's future has never looked brighter and now we're embarking on a search to find the right person to take us to even greater heights. The important thing is whilst there is has been an unfortunate turnover in CEO majority, or for the majority of the turnover has seen due to unfortunate circumstances rather than systematic issues, Penn said. The board has been incredibly solid and we've had the same board for almost a decade. The football operations is incredibly strong and the administration is incredibly strong. It's just unfortunate that it has been circumstantial at times regarding the CEO role. We are, we're very excited about our future and it's something we'll deal with quickly. It's not a concern. We have the opportunity now to reset and make sure that we find the right person for the next five to ten years. The Seagulls chairman also wants Stephen Humphrey's son Jamie to stay at Manly despite the club's chief executive quitting the role. And also there's a there's a host of rival clubs circling the future NRL prospect. Jamie Humphreys, you see here left, was named in the extended Seagull squad for an NRL trial earlier this year, is considered one of the most promising players in the Manly system, and has been progressing through the grades while his father was chief executive. Not only is he a, a talented young player, 
his grandfather Kevin, you see in the bottom right, uh, play for Balamine Tigers, as did his father Stephen. So, with this sudden exit after sponsors raised the concerns, Penn was needed to get onto the front foot over Jamie's future on the northern beaches. Young Humphreys played in the halves during the Seagulls' 28-24 loss to the Raiders in Jersey Flag. On Saturday, he's listed as a development player with the Seagulls, although he's uh, through until the end of 2023, but he can field offers out from elsewhere on November the 1st. He's contracted to the club and we really want him to stay, Penn said. He's definitely part of our future and he is in our emerging squad. He's very talented, been a difficult 48 hours or so, but we'll work through that. Now we come to the first Rugby League of Friday, as the NRL has round five continuing with the New, York, New Zealand Warriors facing the new North Queensland Cowboys at Morton Stadium. Both teams have two wins and two losses for the game, but New Zealand Warriors were the team that won last time out um, in a better performance than their game previously. So here are the teams. Uh, New Zealand Warriors have Adin Fanua Blake starting in the front row and with Bunty Afoa moving back to the bench and Alessi uh, Katoa becoming the 18th man. Bailey Surinan starts on the an edge with Josh Curran named at lock. Jazz Tavenga is out as lo alongside Ben Murdoch Masilla. Aaron Penn and um, Jack Murchie are the new names on the interchange bench. Now for the Cowboys. Scott Drinkwater replaces the injured Hamiso Tabuai uh, Fidal at fullback. Ruben Carter starts in the middle with Jermaine uh, Taunawa Brown uh, on the interchange bench in the final lineup named 60 minutes before kickoff. Owen Hess has been named on the reserves bench as he works his way back from a shoulder injury. Brendan Elliott is the 18th man. So we're going to the first half and the Warriors had the first chance to at points early in the, uh, the game after Sean Johnson pushed a grubber into the in-goal area. However, Jesse Arthurs could not keep hold of it, handing the Cowboys a seven, set, a seven tackle set. The Cowboys troubled the home side with their off-mode game, uh, creating several pieces of second phase football. The New Zealand side struggled to, with their defensive reads, but Chano Harris Tavita forced a knock on when he floored Chad Townsend. However, it was only a slight reprieve for as the visitors wasted little time getting back into the Warriors at red zone and found themselves the first to put the points on the board when Tom Dearden avoided Josh Curran's tackle and darted across the line. The Warriors fought back and levelled the scores a few minutes later when Arthurs made up for his previous errors by latching onto a Johnson short ball for the Warriors. Um, and Reese Wal Walsh conversion handed the home side the lead at 6 points to 4. The side settled into gr the grind trading sets until adding for newer Blake uh, made the error of all errors, casually attempting to grab a Cowboys kick in goal and allowing Scott Drinkwater to pounce on it, handing the visitors back the lead. The New Zealand Warriors found themselves under pressure due to some poor discipline, but were able to keep the Cowboys out and get themselves into the visitors' half. Still, the hard work was undone by Marie Talagi, intercepting a Johnson cut out pass. He rushed down the field uh, before being caught by Adam Pompey. With the Warriors defensive line in tatters though, the Cowboys spread the ball out wide to Cal Felt to score his side's third try of the night. 
The first half was winding to a close, but the Warriors still had a little bit of juice in the tank and got themselves into a prime attacking position when Harris Tavita nailed a perfect 40-20. A few plays later, Curran crossed the white line untouched for the home side's second try to see them go into the sheds, trailing the Cowboys, 18 points to 12. We now move into the second half and Taulagi moves from hero to villain as soon as the second half starts, dropping the kickoff and gifting the Warriors excellent field position. The home side levelled the score and moments later when Nick, uh, Cody Nikorima spied some poor goal line defence and darted his way across to level the scores. An error from Bunty Afoa um, gave the Cowboys the ball back and after back-to-back -back six again calls, a decision to run on the last proved successful when Valentine Holmes rutted over the line and, after a wrestle with Walsh, grounded the ball to regain the lead for the Cowboys. Both sides went through the, a patch where they struggled to complete sets, making errors and a, but, but a penalty against Marcelo Montoya for a high shot allowed the Cowboys to push their lead out by two more. The Warriors made another error when Walsh dropped a kick defusal. Well, trying to grab a bomb and drops it. Simple. But the Cowboys were unable to add to their lead. The home side put uh, their uh, bad, bad um, performance to one side. And uh, they get a few turns at a six again calls. And they made the most of it when Ewan Aitken bashed his way through to score. Leveling the scores once more in the game. Time was winding down for both sides and both were getting desperate for the win. With Warriors attempting two field goals. Johnson had one charge down. And Walsh sees uh, next one sailed to the left of the post. North Queensland had one last dash, but could not get it done with the ball coming loose and Tavita Harris diving on it. This saw the match go to Golden Point. And the Warriors started Golden Point with the ball in hand and, uns and uns unsuccessfully attempted two kicks at goal, uh, drop goals on their first drive. The Cowboys marched down the field on their own and Townsend's attempt also missed. Walsh scoops up the ball and made a big run up the field. And after a few one out runs, Wade Egan fired the ball at Johnson, who had to step an offside defender before kicking his side to their third win in a row with an ugly field goal and sealing the victory for New Zealand Warriors for a scoreline of 25 points to 24. Final game of Friday sees another two teams in that middle block with the uh, two wins from two in their four games. And that is the game between the Brisbane Broncos and the Sydney Roosters. While the Roosters came out winners last time out, it was the uh, defeat against the Warriors for the Broncos. So they went on to make a couple of changes. So first, uh, Brisbane. Uh, Pat Carrigan it, as a knee injury will be out for four to six weeks while Albert Kelly is out with a foot injury which means a mid -season, uh, late mid-season return uh, along with the suspended Tom Fledgler will not be involved in the game. Billy Walters starts in the halves and Keenan uh, Palacia, Palacia uh, starts at Porop. Colby Heverington starts at lock while Kirk Capewell returns in the back row for his 100th game. DC Rabati drops to the bench while Corey Pax and Corey Jensen join the bench with Renko Lee also out. There was no changes 24 hours before the game. Drew Hutchinson will start at hooker for the Roosters with Connor Watson moving back to the interchange bench. Uh, Sia Sua Takiaho drops out of the squad in the 24 hour update with Lindsay Collins moving to the starting side and Fletcher Baker into the 17 on the bench. 
and we go into the first half and both teams are gradually feeling each other out um, but it's the Broncos that start off the scoring after Corey Holt scores on the 18th minute for a 4-0 lead. And Katoni Staggs shows his absolute brute strength after shoving off one defender and bundling over with another one attached to him on the 34th minute for his try, which Adam Reynolds converts for a 10 points to nil lead. No, not saying that Roosters didn't have their chances, but there wasn't any real penetration during the first half for the Roosters. But that all changed when it came to the second half, as Sam Walker went over for the first try for the Roosters to make it 10 points to 4, which Paul Momorowski adds the extras to. It's then a, another try for the uh, Roosters as Joseph Manu goes over on the 53rd minute to put the uh, Roosters in the lead for the first time as Sam Walker adds on the extras on the 54th minute. Then it's the turn of Corey Oates once again as he goes over for his second try of the game on the 59th minute as an automatic response which Reynolds adds the extras to, which means the scores are 16 points to 12. But this doesn't deter the Roosters as they come again, as jo Joey Manu um, is close to the line at, at dummy half, and he breaks the breaks the defence and the markers, and Herbie Falworth does his best to get the ball loose in the tackle. But the ball is already down on the floor. And Manu scores his second try of the game, which tears uh, ties up the match. Roosters haven't been good at, with the boot all season, but Sam Walker has his boot, kicking boots on today as he nails the kick from out wide on the 73rd minute to convert Joseph Manu's try to push the scores to 18 points to 16 in the Roosters' favour. Once again, the Roosters come back as a great kick back inside by um, Drew Hutchinson uh, is picked up by City Eli Tupanoa, who goes over on the 76th minute, left of the posts, which Sam Walker has an easier kick uh, to push the lead out to 24 points to 16. Then we're in for a grandstand finish. On the 78th minute, Corey Oates adds another four point try to make it 20 points to 24 with his hat trick. In a good effort on the left hand side, he was injured in the process as he was clipped by his own man uh, who was running through to get the ball. Reynolds missed the kick and the Broncos came back once more. They get a penalty on the right hand edge just as there are a few seconds remaining but it comes to nothing or so they thought as Roosters are ping for offside as the Hooter has already gone. Another penalty but then they go back to the right hand edge and the ball is in the hands of the Brisbane Broncos and they knock on in for, into another one of their players. That's where the referee blows his whistle for the full time. And that means the scores are Roosters 24, Broncos 20. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and also share this video worldwide, as well as clicking that notification bell for any updates that may be coming your way. So tell me what your thoughts are of the, today's video. Do you think that the uh, Seagulls will keep hold of their young talent Humphreys after his father resigned from the company? What do you make of the CEO's res resignation? Is it a bit dodgy? It does seem like that to me, unfortunately. But it's just one of those things that businesses do sometimes. And the games today, New Zealand Warriors make it three wins in three. Are they starting to get momentum to push further up the league? Or is it a purple patch for the club? Um, and finally, the Roosters pull one out of the hat 
just hanging on at the end to win. Corey Oates gets a hat-trick and ends on the losing side. That's not good, is it? But, hey, wins and losses, it's all part of the game. It's how you do over the season that counts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide. And also comment below about the episodes and how the format's going. But in the meantime, please remember to stay safe. I wish you all the best. I'll see you in the next episode.